Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I've got some new free graphics software to tell you about it. It's called Vector P, but before I can tell you about Vector P, I need to tell you about Photo P. Because the reality is, Vector P isn't there yet. But Photo P is, it's the same guy, and it gives you an idea of where Vector P can go. So Vector P is ultimately going to be an Adobe Illustrator clone. Photo P is 100% a Photoshop clone. If you've never checked this one out before, what you see in front of you, this is Photo P. It is, uh... Uh, it's basically, like I said, it's a Photoshop clone. It's not 100% of the functionality of Photoshop, but what you'll find is it is quite a bit of what Photoshop does. So for examples, we have a variety of filters in here that we can work with, all available over here. So if we wanted to come in here, uh, we could distort this guy. So let's do a ripple effect here. We can control the amount of the ripple here uh, and so on. So basically it is uh, yeah, straight out, this is a uh, Photoshop clone. There's no other way to look at it. But it's also quite handy because you're going to find uh, it runs, what you're noticing here. This is actually in my browser. You can install it locally, but it is browser-based software. It has a lot of the functionality that you would ex expect from Photoshop. Uh, you've got things like your clone brush over here. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, you're going to be immediately at home with Photo P. So if you've never checked this one before, again, it is available in your browser. It's available at photop.com. P-E-A. Uh, and again, the cool thing here is if you need to edit a file, it supports all kinds of files, including PSD, etc. And you can see here from what it can export as. So PNG, Ping, WebP, uh, PDF, SVG, GIF, uh, MP4, uh, DDS, TIFF, Targa, Bitmap, Icon, uh, DXF, RAW, EMF, PPM, and of course, you can save it as a Photoshop document. So if you're out on the go, you don't have access to full Photoshop or you don't need full Photoshop, but you need to edit an image, Photo P could be a good pickup for you. So why the hell have I been talking about Photo P so much? Well, we now have Vector P. And Vector P is to Adobe Illustrator what Photo P is to Photoshop. Now, I started extensively with the Photo P demonstration, though, so you can see uh, just how mature this actually is. So you see here you've got layer styles and all that stuff. All the stuff that you would expect to see uh, from Photoshop are there. Well, when it comes to Vector P, that is not the case. So we're going to have a little bit more of a uh, use your imagination at this point in time. So you can see the documents it supports though. PSD, Adobe Illustrator, XD format, also supports SVG files, fig files, .sketch, PDF, raw, uh, and so on. So it has a wide variety of format. The actual um, performance is quite good. Uh, so here you can see this. there's a lot of layers going on here. Uh, you do have the ability to zoom in and out like so. Everything here is drawn and made up of shapes. Let me show you over the much simpler example. So which guy was it? I think it was this guy right here. There we go. So here is a car made. This is an SVG file uh, and this is composed out of shape. So I'm going to go here to the selectors. You're going to find right now layers are super simple. So this is uh, a product that is definitely under development. It, it needs a lot of work still. Uh, but here we can see this is like a shadow layer that was drawn on top. So we can move that over here. This is another layer that was drawn over top. You can create your own layers like so. Now what you're going to find is there is a lack of blending modes. Uh, there is a uh, corner tool. So if you, if you, Double click a corner, you get a Bezier tool mode for manipulating it and so on. But we're lacking things, very basic things like um, transparency, blending between shapes, etc. So uh, until that stuff gets added, its ability to actually create content is very, very limited. But for actually importing and working with stuff, it's already a useful product. So if I want to bring in uh, another document, so here we'll bring in this example right here. This is a very elaborate um, SVG file uh, and you can see here again, once again, this is made entirely of shapes. So we can grab a shape. So you see here all the lines that were drawn there were made with shapes. So you can use this as an editor for existing SVG and of course Adobe Illustrator documents, uh, but you're not gonna really use it for creating that in them yet because your content creation tools are quite limited. You basically have your drawing tools over here. Uh, you do have basic text tools. So you've got uh, a type tool and a vertical type tool available at this point in time. And here we got the uh, one font set. You do have control up here over uh, the fonts available, like so. Uh, you also have um, control over when you're in line mode. So here, if I'm drawing just a basic shape, for example, oh, this is a freehand pen. So if I'm drawing, let me go back to this one here. If I'm drawing with shapes like this, 
Uh, I do have control over here of the line style of the corners of the dashing and so on. I can control the opacity of it. I can control uh, eventually this. So this seems to be uh, the line fill and I don't seem to have any control over it yet. I do have control over the color of the shapes being drawn. But again, there's no blending here, which is used for making, you know, shadow effects and layering things on top of other things. So as a content creation tool, it is very, very early, very, very limited. Uh, but it, it's got the potential essentially to be, uh, right now, it is a viable document viewer and editor. It is just not a creator yet. Uh, this is ultimately going to be the same kind of concept. You can uh, do your... Um, your ad supported, get rid of the ads. So right now there there are none of those things involved in this like photo P. Uh, but you're going to find very, very, very early in terms of the functionality that is available here. But it, again, it's already useful as a viewer. So if you, someone sends you an SVG file or an AI file uh, and you don't know what to do with it, well, for now, Vector P is an option there. But if we go back again to Photo P, uh, this is kind of a glimpse of where Vector P's future will be. He's basically going to turn it into a full functioning Adobe Illustrator uh, in the browser clone. Uh, which he has effectively done with Photo P, which is 100%, like I said, it, this is a Photoshop clone running in the browser. Uh, but you can see here, we got a ton more of the functionality was actually implemented. And it's just, it's actually kind of impressive how much of this stuff and how well he can actually get this to work. Uh, so if you are interested in checking it out, again, these are all in your browser. So the first one we've got here is Photo P, available at photop.com. And then the second one, the brand new one we got here that is again, very early early on, uh, but this is Vector P, available at V-E-C-T-O-R-P-E-A.com, and yeah, let me know what you think. So again, I don't know if you work much in vector graphics. I, I do. I literally do every day. In fact, the uh, graphics for this uh, title graphic were used uh, in a program called Affinity Designer. Is this going to get me out of Affinity Designer, or is this going to move someone away from Adobe Illustrator? I highly doubt it, but if you're on a Chromebook, or you're on the move, or you can't afford any of those softwares, well, it could be a very good pickup. So let me know what you think of, uh, well, actually, Photo P in general, and then Vector P coming soon. And that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.